I'm here visiting one of the great castles of England, Rockingham Castle in Northamptonshire. The castle has been here over 900 years, and throughout its history, it's transformed from a military stronghold and an icon of royal power to a domestic country house and intimate family home. Join me as I explore the history, the gardens, and the stories of those who have lived here, past and present. not what I was expecting when you said come visit the Rose Garden. I, know. I mean, I know they're not out right now, but I was not expecting this. It'd make you know. a very good Jaeger studio, wouldn't <gasps> it? It would be. <laughs> when I married into the British aristocracy, it was the start of a wonderfully exciting journey, but it was also a little daunting. I became a Viscountess, and for an American girl from a small town outside Chicago, that was quite a shock. I live with my husband Luke, heir to the Earl of Sandwich, and our family at Mapperton House in Dorset. Mapperton has opened up an extraordinary new world for me, and I can't wait to share it with you all. So if you love castles, and manors, and stately homes as much as I do, Please join me as I head off to visit some of Britain's most spectacular historic homes. When you come to Rockingham, this is what, it's a castle, it looks like a castle. It yes. feels like a yes. castle. You've got a, you can see the curtain wall, what's left of the curtain wall running up to your right with the Norman tower and then the mott, which would have been behind that wall at the top, which is now the Rose That would have been where the keep was. It was dominant. We're sort of sitting down here looking up. Yes. You turn round and you have this, what is our sort of iconic towers. But what's really interesting about them is that they're not unique. They may be familiar to you because they are identical in size to the entrance gateway, Edward the first entrance gateway to the Tower of London. The only thing about the Tower of London is it looks that different is that it's got another story. So being three stories, it looks slightly narrower and less dumpy right. and squat. Of course, I thought it looked familiar, uh, to be honest, yes. So uh, Tower of London just has one more story. Has another and story and a bit more, and, and then the, the crenellations. Right, and, so then, it's, and then it's got the portcullis. It, uh, but right. it has the portcullis. And the reason we know that is that there was one plan when we were looking at trying to develop the visitor experience here, that people come here thinking this is a castle. And it looks like a castle with this wall and it's, you can see it, it dominates yes, the yes, landscape. Yes, of course. But you walk through and it's like a stage set. Well, where is the medieval bit? Well, it's, it's sort of gone and moved on. We thought at one stage it'd be quite fun to put the portcullis back and we needed to have a template. So we sent the maintenance team down to the Tower of London because it's, they've got a portcullis there just to see the, right. the mechanism. And then they did the dimensions and they're absolutely identical. So obviously, Edward I had one stonemason and one designer, and he used the same footprint and everywhere. Same but you can That's the same incredible. blueprint. But you can see the here's the groove of the portcullis. Oh yeah. Sadly, sadly, you haven't got it hanging down, and you can see where the winding gear. Oh, of course you can. Yes. Incredible. But we, we sadly decided not to do it. Actually, I, I thought it was becoming yeah. a little bit too, too much of a film set and rather ridiculous. <laughs> but actually, the re main reason we didn't do it is that the, actually you can't fit the, night, the winding gear. We've had it sitting proud of the crenellation. Okay, okay. So that idea failed. <laughs> but it is a medieval gatehouse. Of course it is. And it's it sort wonderful. of gives you a wonderful impression as you walk in. Oh, it's fantastic. Then you're in and you sort of... <gasps> And you imagine coming in on your horse or your carriage, it's, it's, it's all, it's, it all sits well, up there. And, and with the flag right there. Yeah, oh, you could, it's very good. The flag's flying rather well today. It's At least you've got a bit of a breeze. I know, the flag's <laughs> looking fantastic. So you get a sense of arrival. Why did they choose this site? Yes. What was so special about this site? Why, why here? I mean, you, you can see it so clearly when you get to the edge. 
You can't see anything over the wall. No, you can't. You're it's climbing very up protected. towards the wall. And then you get this extraordinary view. <gasps> Look. The Welland River running through the middle here, and you see the site, and you can see how it controls. You can literally see mile after mile. Yeah. You, I mean, this is, so absolutely, it's, this was the perfect spot. Yes. So in front of you, you see the whole evolution of time, of the castle. You have the cross it. gable of the old Norman Hall. And you mm -hmm. know I was saying it was twice the length. When you were inside, I said it's the whole length and you can see it, it was an enormous yes, tide yes, barn. Yes, absolutely. The, the medieval castle, essentially that big right. building, the curtain wall, which would have gone all the way around and you, you yeah, would have been protected. protected. It. Yes. In 1544, James's ancestor, Edward Watson, was granted the lease to Rockingham from the crown and set about transforming the medieval castle into a Tudor home. He, first of all, built this wing, originally a third as long, came right out to the end. Yep. Never, I don't think he ever finished it. Built the wing going that way, put the bedrooms in, so you've got the bedrooms on the first floor yes. with, the, with the gabled end, yes. and these three wings connecting to the curtain wall. And then you've got equivalent wings going up the other side. It's absolutely fascinating hearing James decode the phases of building here at Rockingham. I really hope you're enjoying watching these episodes of American Viscountess because I've been having so much fun making them. But we need your help as we rely entirely on the support of our patrons to cover the cost of production. So please join our American Viscountess team by becoming a patron at patreon.com forward slash American Viscountess. Here, you'll get early access to all the episodes, behind the scenes content, and extra benefits too. I really look forward to seeing you there. The English Civil Wars during the 17th century divided families, and like the dissolution of the monasteries in the century before, destroyed so much of England's architectural heritage. Lewis Watson, who was the grandson of, the, of Edward Watson, who got the lease on the castle, he entertained James I, he bought the freehold of the property in 1620 and was a, a successful royalist. His second wife was a manners who were parliamentarians and lived at Beaver Castle. So he hedged his bets. He sent his silver to Beaver to be safe with his brother-in-law, while at the same time flying the royal standard here thinking he was safe in his castle. And he got it wrong because the parliamentarians captured the castle and he got locked up by the king for losing his castle in Beaver Castle. Oh my the king had taken oh my goodness. and all his silver. But he was then pardoned. Oh he was. And he came back and, and he joined the king at Oxford and was made Lord Rockingham. And then after the Civil War he came back here and he spent a lot of time trying to get all his bits and pieces together. But he <laughs> built this little building here and lived in here while they rebuilt the rest of that. So I that's a see. rather pretty restoration yes. building. 1665, I can see. On the, the date is on the, on, on the drain pipe. Yeah. And then you get the Victorian additions. You've got the gallery staircase that's been oh, tapped yes, on there. Oh yes, which tapped yeah. on there, yes. And then the flag tower, yes. which was put there to balance the fact this wing's not as long as the one on the other side. I see. So it's not this, it's so, so. Now I have one little secret I want to take you to. Okay. Because there's something, we're going back to the medieval, but we have a little surprise inside the castle. Okay. Come with me. All right, exciting. This is a house of all sorts of different bits and different quirks. Well, there's and a different... lot of doors. That's why I'm getting oh confused. Oh my God, you get, you, you, I'm you, getting you, get, you get confused. You get completely confused. So you come in. And so we're now going to get into the service wing by turning mm. left. And right. here you have, A, you've got the color, color scheme. You're still in the old hall. That's the butler's pantry. The bell pulls. <gasps> oh, I love those. But, Brilliant. <clears throat> they're all a bit broken, I'm afraid. Tower bedroom, yeah. tower dressing, tower bed. I love it. And then you it. go out of the old hall. There's the wall. So this is, that the, is the wall. That's the wall. So how oh thick it is. Oh my goodness. So you're right, now you're going into that first gable. Those yes, pointies. yes. And you have the... All making sense. The housekeeper's room, the kitchen. You're in the service part of the house. Yes. But we're going back to the medieval. Oh my goodness. A cobbled street. No. Leading up to 
okay, what this would is... have been the keep. So here's the I curtain. just feel like I'm actually like on a set of like <laughs> of a medieval uh, uh, feature film or something. And this is where the service wings. <gasps> so you can would we... have had your brew house. You would have had your. Can we walk through it? Of course you can. Yeah, can I walk on this? Yeah, so, you can walk on these so things. So this, it was just where all the storerooms were. Well, yes. it was. The, there's the kitchen, which I just showed you. That's the ready-use larder store. <gasps> there would have been brew house, woodshed, bakery. Oh the bakery is in here, <gasps> and then that building at yeah. the end, the Victorians turned from a house into the laundry. Incredible. And, so, and, it, and it's and it's. We'll, if you've got a moment, we'd love to show you. It is the project to do. And so this is the problem, child. It's a it's a wonderful building, but <laughs> it's it is it epitomises the problem of owning a historic house. There are always going to be areas which need work, and right. this is probably the worst description of needing work. Um, it's. Watertight, yes. it's dry, okay, well, that's it's safe, brilliant. which is great. It also, you've got to store today's commercial stuff. I These are the... Santa's post box. Exactly. The pumpkin. I'm, I'm For the think, Halloween I'm not trip. Quite sure Look I'm at not this. Sure. Look at these crows here. Who made this? <laughs> the scarecrow. This is brilliant. <laughs> and so I thought, oh, it might make a rather smart office until I got a quote of three quarters of a million pounds. And Nearly, said, no. I was going to say a million dollars. No. And I thought, <laughs> no, I don't think. <laughs> But it'd make no. a very good yoga studio, wouldn't it? <gasps> it would be. <laughs> You'd love right. it. I would but love it. This and particularly could be... the first, but the first floor would be wonderful. The light would be lovely. That's right. You really... could check in everybody here, have a sort of like your locker rooms down here, yeah. and then you go upstairs and you do yoga. <gasps> there, there you, you go. Are. I'll just have to somehow um, raise some funds for it. I know. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. One of our big problems. Exactly. <laughs> Whether you live in Britain or you're visiting Britain, there are two things that you really can't escape. Number one, the extraordinary amount of historic houses dotted all across the country. And also, you certainly can't escape the weather. And that's why anytime I'm filming at an historic house, I always make sure that I bring my wellies, but not just any wellies. I'm always in a pair of Le Chameau. Le Chameau for me are top notch and they keep my feet incredibly dry, especially when it usually does rain when I'm on location filming at these historic houses. But the lining inside is just made top notch to keep these feet very, very dry. And also, they're very easy to clean. And frankly, I think they look rather good too. So there you go. Thank you to Le Chameau. Le Chameau is one of our sponsors of American Viscountess and if you don't have a, pair, have a pair of these wellies, I highly suggest the next time you come and visit Britain or anywhere else in the world where the weather isn't all that great, make sure you've got a pair of Le Chameau. Built after the Norman conquest of 1066, Rockingham was a royal fortress, a symbol of Norman power and a strategic stronghold between North and South England. The layout of the house and the castle was two baileys with a mop. So this was one bailey. Right. And the other bailey we'll see as we go around the corner. And then this was the mot with the mound. Not here, because this is the spoil. And there would have been a moat. The moat would have come round. So that is... Yes! This is the moat that would have gone round the keep to act as the defence. So if you of think course. of Windsor... Yes. Windsor is exactly the same design as Rockingham. It's the same designer built Windsor that built Rockingham. And so the keep would have been here with a mot originally on top with a, sto a, a, still, a wood stockade and then it was stone. And it was a, you can imagine, you see the dominance of, of that keep. And it was there until the Civil War. And then at the end of the Civil War, the parliamentarians said that these places could not be refortified. They knocked them down. Here at Rockingham, you get a real sense of how fast the castle complex would have been. To find out what makes a castle a castle, be sure to look out for my vlog on the subject coming soon. In the 1670s, the, uh, Lewis Watson, the son of the fellow who was here during the Civil War, basically came and he created a, a, a 17th century terrace garden. So you've so you I, come up, every yes. level is slightly different. Right. And they're all about five steps. And then they've created, there's a, there's a sort of pleasure walk that goes up the side of this mound. 
But if we go up to the top of the mound, Wonderful. right a bandstand, you can look over and see the layout of the, of the old keep, of the or the fortifications keep. of the keep, right. which have turned into a Victorian rose garden. This and is wonderful. Lizzie and I created the garden around the outside oh, because there was nothing. There was a couple of very narrow beds and a couple of big uh, Victorian cherries which fell over. How clever. It's actually mm -hmm. really, really clever. This is not what I was expecting when you said <laughs> come visit the Rose Garden. I, know. I mean, I know they're not out right now, but I was not expecting this. And, this is sensational. And then the round bit is where all the. the um, Gun ports were, and then if you go this way, yes, Julie, you get you can see the dominance of it over the rest of the castle. No, but it's rather wonderful to feel that actually we've been able to do something in this garden to leave a bit of a legacy with this creation of the new garden here, linking. And given it's only 15 years old, these yews have done amazingly, and that they're now the same height as the um, as the yews on the uh, of the Victorian. It's incredible. Garden. It's absolutely incredible. And I like what you said, it's just, you know, it's always adding on, every yes. generation, adding on to what is already there, but putting your mark on it. Well, leaving a little bit. Yeah, leaving a little, a little bit. I will definitely have to come back here in June, do you, you think? The end of June, be the best weekend, the end of June, beginning of July, is when the roses suddenly come out. We're not a rhododendron azalea garden, we're limestone, but roses love this place. But roses, roses, it's all about the rose here. I love it. Join me for future episodes from Rockingham Castle when I'll help prepare the rose garden for the summer. Yeah, are you I'm happy, happy with that? that? Are you yeah. really happy with that? Yeah, I am. Me? Yeah, that's good. Okay, yeah. okay. So, uh, I hope it survives. Julie's rose. <laughs> <laughs> Julie's rose. I'll plant a tree to mark this special Platinum Jubilee year of Queen Elizabeth II. You We've are done a star. It. Thank you so much, <laughs> Julie. Thank no, you, James. You planted my 31st tree I for the 950th of Rockingham, the Queen's Platinum Jubilee. And Thank I'm going to so remember much. this day forever. Ah, <laughs> brilliant. And I climbed the tower to raise the flag. We're hanging the flag. This Whoa. is the flag, this is the ladder we're going up to hang the flag. I love it. Okay, I love this. This is amazing. Yeah, yeah. So and we can see the griffin. And guess what? We got it the right way. Thanks That's the best. <laughs> <laughs>